Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the new Marvel Legends Wolverine, or it probably should be called Logan because he's not wearing his suit. But either way, this is the new movie version of the Hugh Jackman Wolverine, the one in the tank top, not the one in the jacket. You might have been able to tell that on your own, uh, but that one is coming soon, and I think that one looks better. But the good news is, and this is really good news, this one looks better too. Better than it looked like it was going to look when they first showed it to us, when they first gave us a look. It looks significantly better than that. It looks pretty darn good. There's a lot to like about this figure, so let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just a bit under six and three quarter inches to the top of his head, not counting his little hair floofs. We're not going to count those. And so that's that's pretty much a good scaling for this guy. And that puts him at just about 17 centimeters. And let's just take a quick gander at the aesthetic on this guy, because that's how we start all of our reviews. What stands out to me? Uh, well, first of all, the proportions are really nice on this. Not only because it looks like a realistic person, but it looks like a freaking realistic person. I don't know what it is about Hasbro that when they make a comic-based figure, they just lose all understanding of human anatomy and proportions. And I don't get it, because it's never in the, well, almost never in the direction of comic books. Like, it's not exaggerated and dynamic looking. It makes them all look frumpy and dumpy. This is a really good recreation of a very well-fit human male in this case, Hugh Jackman. They did a really good job. Look where the shoulders line up with the neck. Look at the, the width here versus the width here. Look at the length of the legs here to the length of the legs here. It's just so good. Look where the crotch lines up with the hands. It's almost exactly perfect, if not exactly. And it, I wanna be clear, cause I get messages sometimes like, you don't understand anatomy, these people say. Some people are just built different than others. Yes, I know, I'm talking in generalities because I can't, I can't talk about every individual human. I don't know Hugh Jackman's specific proportions, but there are general rules that you can follow for a human skeleton, generally again, and this follows them exactly. And I would bet it matches up with Hugh Jackman very well. And that's one of the reasons this figure is so aesthetically pleasing. They did a really freaking good job with everything on it. Even if you don't study anatomy, you'll notice things look weird if they look weird, or you'll notice they look particularly good. You might not be able to say why, because you haven't studied it, but your human brain can tell. And this is one of those things where I, I find it very hard to believe anybody's going to say this looks bad from a, like an anatomy standpoint. They're going to all think it looks extra good, because it does. They nailed it. It looks awesome. As far as the paint goes, yeah, the jeans are a little funny looking. They're a little splotchy, unless there's like a particular reason they're supposed to be splotchy like that. Who really cares? It's just the jean texture. I doubt many people are going to be concerned with that. They did a really good job painting his belt and his buckle. Look how clean it is. All the paint is where it belongs. Like what the heck? That's not what Hasbro normally does. <laughs> Look at that. The paint is right where it goes. So nice. We do have texture throughout the jeans, of course, and the tank top. Uh, the tank top has a little bit of yellow throughout to make it look nasty, I guess. Maybe that's, I mean, it's definitely intentional. Maybe that's accurate. I don't know. Mine has some red on there. Where that came from, who knows. But boy, did they do a good job. Even up here where it's a little sloppy. That's, that's unfortunate, but that's really the worst of it. And you can see the way they oriented the shoulders with the trap muscles here. This is exactly how Hasbro should design all of their butterfly joints and shoulders. Obviously with uh, changes for various characters with like really bulky muscles or something. But this type of engineering is exactly how they should do what they're doing. It's so much better executed than almost every other thing they have made recently. It's so much better. Look at the way the shoulders are far, oh man, they just, this is why I say they, it can be done. And don't even give me the excuse, guys. We're gonna rant for a minute, because this is a positive rant, and uh, I'm tired of people saying how negative I am. I'm gonna explain you something. Having more budget for this figure does not explain why decisions are made for the same, like this engineering is not new. We see butterfly joints and ball hinge shoulders on pretty much every figure. The budget doesn't affect that, okay? They can design it well like this every time they have to make it because it's the same parts. It's the same amount of plastic. It's the same engineering. It's just implemented properly here. And it can be implemented properly every time they do it without it costing more. The budget is not the issue. The budget affords paint, things like that, extra parts, extra accessories. It doesn't change the engineering. 
Now on this guy, we do have something that's a little bit different, which is there are no pins in his arms. That's a good thing for sure. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. They did a good job with that. I'm not sure why everybody's freaking out about it. Even trash tier lines have pinless joints a lot of the time. So like even the, a lot of the uh, DC multiverse had pinless joints. I don't know why that was such a big deal, but it worked out well. So hey, what the heck? That's awesome. Good for them. If they can keep doing that without raising the prices. Awesome. Anyway, back to the, uh, let's talk about the, the important part here. The face. It looked like it was going to be really bad when they first showed it. At many angles, many angles, it looks excellent. I would venture to say, and I know I'm going to catch flack for this, I don't care. This is as accurate. Now, granted, it's cheaper, smaller scale, less detailed, but as accurate to the likeness of Hugh Jackman as some of the Hot Toys versions. I know I'm going to catch flack. I don't care. Some of those are way off. If you look at the actual facial features, this is way on. If you, if you look at the actual individual facial features, the arrangement on the face. Some angles look weird, some don't, but it is really, really well done. And they did a good job with the paints. It's just all around excellent. It is awesome. And since we're going to talk about the aesthetic, this one isn't anywhere near as good. It's not that bad though. Really just the paint on this one is messed up. You can see he's got like a lump of skin here, which should actually be beard and his beard paint is over too far. So it's a little bit off, but they still nailed Hugh Jackman's likeness. For a Marvel Legends figure, this is this is god tier to use a video game term that is just it's maybe the best they've ever done it is just incredibly well done the aesthetics on this guy are phenomenal his arms are a little shiny because they're just bare plastic i don't care that's fine let's say he's sweaty a little bit and it's perfectly fine so the claws are aesthetically really well done we'll get into those a bit more later uh but all in all wow this is just Aesthetically, I'm going to give it a 9.8 out of 10. I can't say it's perfect because obviously there are some issues, but good gravy. That's a saying I'm going to use now. That is just so well done. Easily the best looking Marvel Legends figure to date, at least this year, maybe ever. This is just, I can't get over the fact that this is Hasbro compared to some of the other garbage poop stuff that they released. Okay. All right. Uh, it's already almost eight minutes in and we haven't talked about anything but the aesthetic. Accessory wise, we have the two heads. I already showed them to you. We have normal and then we have angry. And then we have two different sets of hands. We have the claw hands, the bone claw hands. I would argue the bones are probably a little bit too much baby poop colored, <laughs> a little bit overzealous with the painting, but we do have those. They are removable. And then we also have his metal claw hands, which I don't know if they're going to try to use these claws again because they're specific to the movie, but they are really well done. Let's just zoom in and look at the hand specifically and hope we don't lose focus too much. They are perfectly arranged. This is how they came in the package. I didn't have to do any adjusting. They're so well done. So nice. They're very thin too, very thin and flimsy but they work and they are, you can pop them out. So if you want to put them like on either side of a person's face with the middle one gone, you could do that. They work really well. The only gripe I have about these hands is if you look at the claws and then if you look at the hinge, they're not on the same angle. So if you wanted to put his arm out straight, his claws don't technically go straight. See how they're like this one is straight forward. These are off to the side. That's a little irritating. That'll hurt some people when they're trying to do some photography, but I'm sure they can work around it. But yeah, the claws are, these are the best claws by far. Uh, they, they really did a good job on the claws here. So that is awesome. You could count his uh, dog tags as an accessory if you want to. They're a little chunky, but they're still fine. So accessory wise, extra head, extra hands. I'll give it an eight. That's pretty good. I like it. That's fine. Okay, now it's time for the articulation. Now we do have one key issue here with the articulation and we're just gonna start with it because it is the first thing we always talk about. We'll get that aside. Double ball peg neck, definitely the best option for a neck on any figure ever of all time for sure, 100%. But the way they implemented it, they still don't know what they're doing with double ball pegs. You, like, you have no range. That's the range and you can adjust on the top but you don't have enough range, the main peg movement. So as I showed you guys in one other video, the main movement happens down here in the neck. You want that to be your greatest amount of range. And then this is just for adjustment. They did it in the opposite direction again, and they buried the peg all the way down in here. So you have very little range on that peg. It's not terrible. You can still get lots of nice adjustable posing, like kind of like all neutral posing with head movement, that kind of thing. You're not going to be able to lean his head very far back or even very far forward or very far in any direction. It's just going to be like attitude posing, which is fine. And they're definitely headed in the right direction. But if they just bring this ball peg that's all the way down here up 
make it a little bit bigger, you'll be able to lean this so much better and it'll be so much, well, dang it, that's gone. That bounced off the camera, I went like 10 feet away. We'll use this one. Oh boy, that is, there we go. So, yeah, you'd be able, it, it's fine. I wanna be clear, this is fine and it's better in some ways than the normal articulation, but they definitely need to work on their double ball pegs. It's not what it should be. Like this head, you can't lean it back far enough to put it in the hunched over pose you want to put him in. I know you want to do it, put his hands like this sort of deal. I know you want to do it. You can't lean his head back far enough. Okay, anyway, butterfly joint works nicely. Better going back than forward, but it still works and it looks good. No issues there, that's fine. Shoulder hinge, that's fine, no problems there. Full rotation, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, no issues at all. Wrist swivel and hinge, that's all good. Ab crunch goes back nicely, goes forward nicely. Waist twist, hips, not full on splits, but that's pretty good, I'll take it. Bringing them forward, not quite as far as I'd like. I'd like to point out, they're very gappy. And we still don't have incredible range here. Uh, I'm gonna go way too into the technology, or engineering, I suppose, than I probably should. This video's gonna be long. The location of the ball peg in the hip is what's keeping it from working. There's more than enough room in that cavity for the leg to move better. They need to adjust how they arrange that ball peg that goes through the crotch and into each hip. If they adjust where that falls in this part of the leg, you'll be able to have much better range with less gapping, I might add. Uh, the way it is is just, you end up with the plastic bumping against it when you can see, well, it's dark, but there's tons of room in there and they still let it bump against it, so that kind of sucks. But you do get plenty of range, it'll be fine. Uh, thigh swivel is fine, double jointed knees, fine. Ankles, they go back, decent, that's enough. They don't really go forward at all, that blows, big fat chunks. I hate that they keep giving us figures that can't bring the foot forward. It's almost not even enough to get them to stand up properly. So that really sucks. You do get a uh, an ankle rocker right there. And the ankle itself is essentially a ball hinge. So the ankle rocker works nicely, but you still can bring the toe forward far enough for a lot of posing. So that blows, but otherwise, it's a really nice batch of articulation with some limitation in the hips and in the neck. Still really good though, especially for a Marvel Legends figure. It's perfectly fine, I'll give it an eight. And it's better than fine, it's better than most, so I'll give it an eight. And now it's time for the final verdict now that we're well over 10 minutes. I didn't intend to do that, but YouTube's algorithms will be happy, and that makes me happy. So, uh, this is easily a must have. If you're a Marvel Legends collector, even if you don't collect the movie figures, unless you absolutely hate Hugh Jackman Wolverine, this is a must have type of figure. Uh, it's just, from an objective standpoint, so incredibly well done. And from a subjective standpoint, there's not a whole lot to dislike about it. I mean, you'd have to not like quality good figures or like the character itself type of deal. So it's all around winning as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna give it a final verdict of nine out of 10. It is one of the best Hasbro Marvel Legends releases of all time. And I think that's where we'll leave it there. That's enough. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should, because I have new videos out just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.